now we will be studying this pie chart or they also call it as sector graph not pizza graph pie chart if you look into it they are given three varieties of organisms invertebrates vertebrates and plants if you look into the invertebrates you will notice that insects look at this chart nearly 80% 75 to 80% of them are insects in invertebrates they have a huge distribution okay mollus second larger crustaceans are lesser if you look into arthropoda it includes crustacea and insecta combined together they are nearly 80 to 85% but if you are sub categorizing them as class insecta class crustacea they are lesser other animal groups in invertebrates what might be the other animal groups porifera sea lion predator the ascalmentus platyelmentus annelida echinodermata they all come under the other groups they are around 20 to 25 percent but majority of them in this sector graph if you analyze insects are majority of the organisms found in the invertebrates in vertebrates what do you notice fishes variety are maximum nearly 50 percent of the total types of vertebrates you find them in fishes the next largest is i think birds reptiles then you have amphibians and mammals we are all placed under mammals we are lesser in variety species variety when compared to fishes birds and reptiles are more fishes are the maximum birds and reptiles are second in position mammals and amphibians distribution are lesser see the western part so uh india you notice maximum variety of amphibians are there even today they are discovering new species of amphibians frog varieties if you just search the center for ecological sciences indian institute of science website you get many papers of discovery of new species of amphibians okay so you find a lot of amphibians in western ghats when compared to eastern ghats then plants if you look at the fungi has maximum variety just compare the fungi percentage of it when compared to mammals birds and amphibians fungi are more in distribution than mammals birds and amphibians fungi has huge variety when compared to other variety of plants algae to an extent it has at least 10 to 15 percent lichens are very less they are the pioneers of succession plant succession you know about they are of three or three types crustos polios and fruticos type of lichens okay then angiosperms to an extent they are nearly about 30 to uh, 40 percent of them are angiosperms ferns and alleys they are less in number maybe their distribution during the jurassic period might have been more when compared to present era Ferns are pteridophytes. We are talking about mosses. They are all bryophytes varieties. That is uh, the mosses. Okay. So remember about that. They are all lesser in distribution when compared to fungi and angiosperms. So these are all representing global biodiversity of this invertebrates, vertebrates, and plants. Okay. So you should understand this sector graph. To understand the distribution of diversity, so species are, species are maximum in case of vertebrates. Okay. So how is the pattern of biodiversity? At the equator region, maximum biodiversity you find. As you move away from the equatorial region, the species diversity becomes lesser and lesser. See if you take a globe and observe. Equator zone maximum diversity is there, but when you go to from tropics to temperate and Arctic conditions, Arctic and Antarctic conditions, very less number of species are available. Biological diversity is lesser. So on the equatorial zone, you find maximum biological diversity or biodiversity. That is what they say about. So in the latitudinal gradient, species diversity decreases. As we move away from the equator towards the pole, so tropic they are given the uh, what do you call it as the uh, longitude and latitude of it. 
they have more species than temperate and polar region. Tropics are having more species than temperate and polar region. The largely tropical Amazonian rainforest, if you look into in South America, even I told you about the book that BGL Swami has written, Namma Guttele, Dakshin America, most of the food that we are consuming today have originated in South America, whether it is watermelon, tobacco, groundnut, tobacco, they rubber, they have all originated from South America. That's the reason the famous plant botanist BGS Swami has authored a book in Canada, Namma Guttele, that's in America. In my country, South America, we translated. All the food that we consume, they have originated from South America. Amazonian rainforest, where they have maximum biological diversity. It is also one of the hotspots of biodiversity. Even today, because of invasion of man or human activities, the species are dropping down. Now, if you look into what are the species that you can look at this Amazon, Amazonian rainforest, 40,000 species of rainforest are there. And we know only a few of them to be medicinal plant, food yielding plants. There are many plants which we, have, uh, we do not have information about. They might be a potential source of medicine. If you look into malaria, they were extracting one of the tribes, they were utilizing the parts of the queer, quinoa tree, cinchona tree. And whenever they consumed, they were able to overcome malaria. So one of the scientists, he observed that and he extracted quinine from this cinchona tree and they utilized it as a medicine for malaria. That is how malaria drug was discovered. So there are thousands of plants and animals, their medical, medicinal properties or uh, their utilization as food we are ignorant about. We are all dependent upon a few species of plants and animals as a source of food. But there are thousands of varieties there we can get medicine and many other yield. Okay. So now if you look into Amazonian rainforest has 40,000 species of plants, 3,000 species of fishes, 1,300 species of birds. So if you have visited the Bandargatta National Park when you visited, you might have seen a huge variety of them, but it is lesser. What we have seen is lesser. You find different colors and patterns in nature. If you are just Interested in colors and patterns of birds itself, you get a huge collection. Why should the butterfly have such a wonderful dotted and speckled wings? What is its purpose? Okay. All this we have to answer and they also already have an answer. You have to remember about this. 427 amphibians, 427 species of amphibians, 378 species of reptiles, <coughs> more than 1,25,000 invertebrates, which includes Corinthians, Celandraca, then uh, you have this uh, Ascalmentus, Platyalmentus, Analina, uh, Arthropoda, Echinodermata, Mollusca, all of those constitute invertebrates, nearly 1,25,000 species of invertebrates. Your angry birds, most of the pictures of these angry birds are all the genuine birds exist from which they have made these caricatures. They are all not imaginary ones. Some places you might find here and there some angry birds also. Why does tropical rainforest have greater biodiversity? Why not in temperate regions? Why should I create tropical rainforest, like Amazonian rainforest? There are various factors, like availability of sunlight, then the uh, soil profile of that, okay. rain, water availability is one of the important factors. If you look into this, they do not have glaciations. In temperate region and in the polar regions, glaciers are there, they move away freezing conditions are there. That is not found in tropical rainforest. Okay? And they have remained undisturbed for billions of years. Even when there is a continental drift, most of these have not moved away. They have remained undisturbed either from natural calamities or from human activities since they were undisturbed 
there was there is a huge biological diversity in tropical rainforest and this undisturbed vegetation flora and fauna resulted in evolution for large number of species as a result there is more diversity they ask it for two or three more questions we should be prepared for that some questions they might ask you tropical environment sunlight temperate ones are less seasonal so they are less seasonal relatively more constant and predictable they are specialized in niche specialization see there are huge trees in amazonian rainforest sometimes the sunlight cannot penetrate through this canopy only the uppermost canopy of the tree outline of the tree they get sunlight so you find a sub climatic condition below this canopy of trees shade loving plants you might find those plants which are found in uh, animals which are found in marsh and wet conditions they survive there in the sub climatic condition we call it as niche niche is micro habitat that you find among this habitat so they are that sort of uh, they are constant and predictable type of niche specialization which leads to greater species diversity that is another aspect and more solar energy is available when i discussed about energy flow how much percentage of total sunlight is utilized by the plants 2% okay so that is what is the solar energy being utilized and majority of them are being utilized in amazonian rainforest that is the major reason for the fertility of that rainforest that's the reason they have more species diversification both in flora and fauna when you are talking about flora i am talking about vegetation when i say it as fauna i am talking about animals okay so prokaryotes no one has studied the diversity of all the prokaryotes that exist on earth what are we are speaking we are speaking about the macro flora and fauna what we have studied plenty to study you are the future uh, scientists you have to make those studies lot of them we do not know about we are ignorant about them okay. now species in their relationship they have a graph which they might ask for three months so this was put forth by humboldt okay it's not a maker of car alexander von humboldt was a plant scientist ecologist who has put forth this species and area relationship so species richness within a given area so species area relationship where would be the species which was more within a small given area the amazonian rainforest species which was would be much more than we find in a desert or polar regions <coughs> understand about that so within a region species which was increased with increase explore area but only up to a limit so some points are given to you understand the graph See, mathematical form it has been plotted. They have found a rectangular hyperbola between species richness and area for a wide variety of taxa. Taxa means variety species. Okay, wide variety of taxa when they are plotted against species richness and area, they have got a rectangular hyperbola. It is not parabola, rectangular hyperbola. So on a logarithmic scale, you can represent it as log s equals log c. Plus z log a. So in that graph you have to draw that. If you have a logarithm scale, the pink color one is the logarithm scale, which is given by this formula. Log s equals log c plus z log a. The hyperbola of it, they have is s c equals c a square. S c equals c a square. The rectangular hyperbola what we have got when we plot the species which which has in a particular area. We get a hyper a rectangular hyperbola. The formula for that is S C plus C A square. When you convert it into a logarithm part of it, it's a straight line log C log S C plus log C plus Z into log A. What is S there? Species richness. What is A there? Area. What is Z? Slope of the line. Y equals M X plus C. So remember this straight line log. So c equals y intercept. What is c? Y intercept. 
So you have to write all that indication after drawing the graph for two parts. They might ask you, they have asked it also, I believe, once in a while, one of the question papers, the plotting of species area relationship, graphical representation of it. So the hyperbola rectangular curve, what is the formula? SC plus CA square. Okay. Then what is the logarithm part of it? Log S equals log C plus Z plus Z into log. What does C represent? C is y intercept, Z is slope of the line, then S is species which has A is area. So this plot you have to remember about the species and graphical plot of it. What is the importance of species diversity? This question they have asked for. Say if you know facts, you can write very well in biodiversity. Very easy to remember and score marks. But if you do not know anything, please don't attempt these questions. I would strongly recommend that you don't do it. Because all the answers they expect in uh, a particular line or a word to be written. If you have not covered that, you lose marks. So what is the importance of species diversity to the ecosystem? I have not discussed about ecological services, I will do it later. Please remind me. So the ecological services, they are not completed yet. So anyway, community, it includes many populations. Community is more species generally tend to be more stable within that community. More the number of species in a given area, stable the community. Yes, that is what it indicates. Okay. So because they would have stabilized. Now the second aspect, a stable community, what should it have? It should not show too much variations in productivity from year to year. This year there was more productivity in biomass, next year it is lesser. That sort of variation should not happen. Productivity should remain same or at least an average productivity for many years if it is there then it is a stable community. It must be resistant to changes or resilient to changes. <coughs> it should be able to withstand small changes that might happen by entry or exit of a species. By appearance or disappearance of a species, it should not affect them. So they should have resistance and resilience. Resilience means bouncing back. Even if they have lost two species, they should be able to get two more species and withstand that changes. So then it is a stable community. If it is able to withstand resistance and resilience, we call them as stable community. They might be disturbance from man or man natural disasters. <coughs> stable community must be resistant to invasion by alien species. What are alien species in plants? Water hyacinth is an alien species. It's not known to our country. It was not a native of our country, but some of the Britishers brought it as an ornamental plant for their gardens and that is how it has spread throughout India and now you call it as terror of Bengal. Parthenium, Hysterophosis. It is not a native of this country. It's an alien species which has invaded and survived well. See, in a stable community, even if such alien species come, they should be able to withstand them. If they are not able to withstand, they are not a stable community. Okay? So they should be able to be resistant to invasion by alien species. It can be plants or animals. I just quoted some examples of plants. Okay? So David Tillman's long term field experiment. He has made a field experiment. Tillman. Okay. What does it show? More species show less year to year variation in a community. If a community or an area has large number of species, they showed lesser variation. Variation is like Vityasakal. Vityasakal Kadame Vatya community. This is as per long term, Tillman's long term field experiment that he conducted. Increased diversity, more the number of plant and animal species, more are their productivity. What do you mean by productivity? Net primary productivity, gross primary productivity. Okay? The productivity which is passed on to the producers. From them it is passed on to the consumers. The productivity can be measured in terms of biomass, numbers or energy contribution. So more the species diversity, more the productivity. This is what David Tillman's experiment showed. 
Now, loss of biodiversity, this they have asked for five hours many times. Okay, I'll just give you a brief introduction. After that, in the next class, we'll continue. Okay. So, the IUCN, what is IUCN? International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. They have, this is according to 2004, they have documented the extinction of 78 plus species. Completely they have vanished from Earth. One thing I always try to say to my students is about Dodo bird, the flightless bird. They were not having any predators in this isolated island where they were. Once humans started habituating that place, inhabiting that island, okay, all these birds were easy prey. They could easily catch this bird and eggs off and they became easy prey, not only from human beings, but the animals that he introduced for pigs and dogs, cats, they all became easy prey within a short duration of time after human beings inhabited that island, Dodo bird completely became extinct. There was a relationship between one of the varieties of tree and Dodo bird. That tree used to produce fruits which had the seeds and the seeds were very hard. Their seed coat was very hard. They could never sprout, the seed couldn't germinate on its own. But the dodo bird used to feed those fruits and the seed. When it entered into its digestive system, the hard seed coat of the seed used to be softened up. And they were thrown out as bird droppings. Okay? In this bird droppings, the seed which had a softened seed coat, they germinated. Without this bird's contribution in softening the seed coat, the plant would not have germinated and their numbers would not have increased. So there was some symbiotic relationship between the tree and the dodo species. But because of their disappearance, now you don't find the number of trees are less. Even though by artificial method, we can soften the seeds and make them grow, but there is no natural agent to do that because of the disappearance of dodo bird. You can find in British Museum some of the stuffed dodo birds. Today it is extinct, completely disappeared from our Opposite of extinct is extant. Something which is existing, we are all extant. In huge numbers we exist. Opposite of extant is extinct. We have completely disappeared. Dodo bird is one such example in Mauritius, not far off. Mauritius, you will notice that quake in Africa, Tynosine in Australia, Steelers found in Russia, three subspecies of tiger, subspecies, it is not a new species, subspecies of tiger, Bali tiger, Java tiger, Caspian tiger, they have completely become extinct. So the, they have made a red list. Red list is where they have this uh, data of RET. What is RET? Rare, endangered and threatened RET species under it. Rare, <coughs> endangered and threatened species, they have a list. Extinct species also, they are maintaining a list in the red data book that is maintained by IUC. This is the data as per the 2004 information of IUCN. So these were all the recent extinction of animals and animals majorly from the Earth's surface. So since the origin and diversification of Earth, they are saying about five episodes of mass extinction. Complete extinction of species. It happened during dinosaur stage. All the reptiles disappeared. It might have been because of volcanic eruption or a comet might have passed very close to the Earth's surface or it might have been because of onset of winter age, ice age. Okay, or it might have been because of an asteroid dropping onto the earth and destroying the complete, uh, well, all the species that existed at that part of time. So five mass extinction have happened, there were huge time gap there, but very soon the sixth mass extinction will be majorly because of human being and his activities. Okay. So, sixth mass extinction is in progress now. 
we cannot live as only one species without other plants and animals and biological diversity. We cannot live all alone as a species. It is not possible for us to survive. You can have all the technology, but without this biological diversity, none of us can survive on land. So you should understand this. So sixth mass extinction is what we are all progressing ahead and you will be witness for it as next generation. And these are all the crimes and sins of our generation and previous generation. We are giving you this as a inheritance to you. We have wiped out so many species and giving it to you. Anyway, in the next class we will continue with the other part.